From my heart and from my hand Why don't people understand my intention? Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. So we are back on the electric Clubman conversion. We're at the body shop this morning collecting the subframes so that we can start to rebuild and prep those. But let's just pop inside and check out the progress on the body. So as you can see, all the major welding has been done now. The floor's complete. They've also started to work on some of the surface areas as well to remove any dints or scratches in final prep for the next stage. Wait, stop the video. I know what you're thinking. The rear floor has not been cut out. Well, unfortunately, one of the challenges we do in electric conversion is always going to be rules and regulations. And we've been advised that we should not cut out the rear floor. Now, for those of you that have been here from the beginning of this journey, originally my idea was to cut out a square in the bike so I could drop the batteries down low in the floor and not lose the cargo space. But unfortunately, that does not look like it's going to be the case. So we're going to end up with a false floor in the bike to conceal the batteries. Now, I'm, I'm not too disappointed because obviously it retains some of the originality. But again, when you're doing electric conversions, don't believe everything you see on TV. You must check your local regulations because if it means significant change to the structure of the original factory spec car, then you'll probably find it will not go through the local requirements and you could end up with a very expensive paperweight. If you recall from my earlier comments about this shell, it was already in pretty good condition. There was only one or two rough spots on the body because I think it's had a restoration at some point in its life anyway. So all they're doing now is just going over those areas, making sure that surface rust has been taken away and just repairing one or two pieces. Uh, the rain gutter itself is also now being replaced as well. So it can go to next stage prep. Unfortunately, one of the dials couldn't be safe, so we had to order a new one. They're just doing the prep work on the bonnet now before they go to removing the paint itself. Okay, that's it for the update from the body shop. It's time to head back to the workshop because we have some new toys. Had a quite a few deliveries today, so let's uh, open these up and see what we've got. Some of these have been quite a long time coming. So as you can see, we finally got the uh, the coilover kit for the suspension, including the brackets for the front because we have to remove the OEM ones to fit these. That's fantastic. See what else we've got in here. Oh, excellent! It is the it's the full set front and rear, along with the springs as well. So this is great because this is going to allow me now to continue with the subframes. So that's great. Those came in from Mini Spares, who seem to be quicker at deliveries at the moment than the rest. This one's quite heavy, so I think I know what this one is. This should be the brakes. Actually, these are the brakes that you chose, if you remember. At the beginning of the year, I asked you to vote on some of the color schemes for the Clubman conversion. And for this, oh, that's never a good sign. A pink slip. That's quite a long list of things that are not in stock and are on back order. That's really frustrating because I only tend to order things that are supposed to be on stock unless they're special items. But uh, yeah, okay, we will deal with that later. Let's see what we've got to start with. Okay, some of the CV boots and, oh yeah, wow. <clears throat> this is a complete brake and front hub assembly in the colour that you voted for. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Fantastic. 
Okay. So. There you go, guys. This is what you ordered. This will allow me to convert the drums on the front to full discs because we need as much power, stopping power as we can get. So what else did we get? Let's see. I think these are a box. Okay. So for this one, we decided to go for blue seat belts. You don't see blue seat belts that very often. The red ones seem to be more popular. But I thought, given that some of the uh, dashboard covering has blue stitching, I would go for blue seat belts on this one. So, that's the two front seat belts. Good. Well, at least these items will allow me to crack on with getting the subframes finished. But, uh, yeah. That's quite a long list of things that are not in stock and on back order. So that's kind of frustrating. So I need to chase this down. So now that all these uh, nice pieces have come in, it's time to start work on the subframes. We're going to tattle the front one first. Obviously we're going to be fitting all new bushings, but first of all, we need to wire brush this down, degrease it, clean it up and paint it before we uh, go any further. This uh, front subframe is in pretty good condition actually. So the keen eyed amongst you will have noticed at the beginning of the video there was actually two subframes when we went to the body shop. Now they are both mine because the other one was actually from a previous build when I changed a manual to an automatic. Now for this electric conversion we do need a manual subframe and when we cleaned down the Clubman frame it turned out that it was actually cracked at the back. So this is going to turn out to be quite fortunate for us because that means I can use the other subframe. Now you'll notice when it's on the bench that this is not the one with the drum brakes, this is the one with disc brakes but they're in absolutely awful condition so they're going to get replaced anyway with the ones that you voted for. Now because we're using coilovers there's actually no need to use the trumpet and the rubber cone for the suspension because it relies entirely on the shock with the uh, coilovers. So yeah, I won't show you this entire process. It's kind of uh, boring, but I will show you the finished article probably in the next episode for the electric equipment. So one more thing to share with you guys, and that's a new piece of equipment for the workshop. I've actually purchased an ultrasonic cleaner to take care of some of the small parts because the prices now for the small parts coming out of the UK is just ridiculous. I've decided to do a lot more refurbishing and restoration of parts. This is a part from an automatic gearbox that we trialed yesterday. I mean, this was covered in road grime, tar, you name it. It goes underneath the car, so you can imagine the mess. 30 minutes at 40 degrees and it's cleaned it fantastically. Now, this particular ultrasonic cleaner uh, is a 15 litre. It costs 120 euros to purchase, so pretty good value. Anyway, that's it for the moment, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next update. Bye-bye.